And welcome to Kentucky Burr Review slash Heavy Metal Bake Sale. I'm Special K. I'm Catfish. I'm Sea Bass. Whoa. You ever had one of these? That was that, that, was that nitro. Oh, baby. Um, so tonight we're going to be talking about the state of rock and metal music in general. Um, so obviously we've got to have beers for when we're drinking. Um, I have this beautiful, beautiful Guinness draft. Um, sea Bass there has a Budweiser Copper Lager aged in Jim Beam barrels. And Catfish has Zima. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thanks, um, this has been the subject we wanted to cover for a while, and we figured this would be a better video since it's not like, as like a, a specific album or something like that. It'll fit really good on KBR, so we decided to put this on KBR, and then get you guys to come over and watch videos on our other channel. So. Right. Um, so uh, we will put a link to Heavy Metal Bake Sale in the description, um, and if you'd like to see more videos like this. Let us know in the description down below. I don't know what that was. All right, so who wants to start us off? So, the state of rock and roll, a lot of people are saying rock is dead. Is rock dead? Do you guys think rock is dead? Or dying? I think uh, it's sleeping. That's my take on the situation. I'm, I'm going to go I'm gonna go drowsy. <laughs> drowsy, yeah. It's like the phoenix. It's, you know, so I guess that makes it dead. I guess phoenixes don't sleep Arousing before they rise. Answers. They just... They die, 100%. So, the most popular music right now, according to Spotify, would be what their catfish? Uh, well, the most popular genre of music in America and around the world is definitely hip-hop at this point. Uh, rap, dance music, stuff like that. Um, I, I don't have any issues with that, per se. No, I have no particular issues with the rise or fall. Oh no. It doesn't <laughs> I look just can't real. stop staring at it. It's like real. it's picturesque. It's perfect. It is. You messed up. But anyway, I messed up. Get Zima. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I have no particular issues with hip hop or rap. Uh, I enjoy a lot of artists, and I definitely think it has its place uh, in my music mix as well as everyone else's music mix. Not mine. <laughs> But I don't have any issues. To, I just don't to, listen to to each his own, I suppose. Yeah, no, I just uh, don't but listen to any that that being said, uh, the current popularity of rock music is definitely falling. It's definitely not where it used to be. Uh, some people see this as a big, huge issue. I'm a little bit less concerned. I think like I'm more bummed. Than anything, just because I really enjoy rock Agreed. music more than anything. Uh, but I understand things kind of, you know, run the course, just like all other genres of music have ran, you know, their course. <laughs> R.I.P. But I'm still Empire glad. Still going yeah. strong. Bro. Yeah. But I'm still glad to see that there are still bands that are new. They're still making music. You know, they're still smaller, even if it's not broadcast it to the masses as like the premier, like the biggest band in the country. They're I mean, still smaller bands. Still our, doing our, current, our current hopes um, for mainstream rock, rock right now are Greta Van Fleet, Ghost, and the Foo Fighters still somehow. Well, they haven't released somehow. an album in a while, I don't think. Not that I remember. Greta Van Fleet's never released an album. No, not them. Yeah. I'm talking, I'm thinking of the, the, the Black Keys. They're, they, they, I would classify by them as rock, but I mean. They're, yeah. they're fine. They arguably they do their music f to make money. Like, they're very open about that. That's I mean, not hidden. That's, but I mean, well, the, a lot of rock artists now. It's not. It's not really that way at this point. Uh, you know, it's like legacy things for like bands like Slayer and you know. Band, well, I'm not going to mention Metallica because they're clearly in it for money. But uh, <laughs> bands like Slayer, you know, they're not. They're not having big draws. Obviously, they're getting money. But it, it's like the tour they're going on right now. Like they keep adding. It's their retirement tour, and they keep adding more and more and more dates because like he just. Um, Tom already just said, hey, you know, I have my fans coming to my show. Say, in the driver three or four hours to come to my show. I'm going to extend my tour because I want everybody to be able to go to my right. show. And obviously, they're going to make money. But if, if this is the end of Slayer, you know, everybody who wants to see them should get to see them one more time before, you know, it's over. And that's an example versus a band or versus like Post Malone, who's only going to go to the biggest city with the biggest arenas to get the most money from, you know, their venues. And that's sure. not saying anything. It, it, it makes sense. If they're that big at that point, they're not. It doesn't make sense for them to go play the Mercury Ballroom that holds 900 people. Right. Like, yeah. No. I mean, and that's fair. But even like I was saying, even though they may, these bands may not be the biggest bands in the world, there are still bands 
constantly releasing music. Um, Royal Blood dropped an album last year. Cage Elephant's been releasing stuff over the last several years. Alice in Chains just released an album. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned uh, Ghost just won a Grammy a year ago. Already made a new album. You know they're staying. They're staying relevant. And so although these bands may not be the biggest thing on the planet, they're gaining success. They're still gaining fans, and they're still inspiring other artists to yeah. follow them in their footsteps. And, and the way people consume their music and their media is different from versus mm -hmm. right. um, 10 years ago, and then go 20 years ago, it's different. 10 years ago, um, MP3s were a thing, iTunes, um, CDs were still prevalent, but also illegally downloading music was also very prominent 10, 15 <laughs> years ago. RIP. So, um, Napster, LimeWire, <laughs> yeah. I'm a little older than you guys. I used I to Kazaa. I, I don't know what either of those two things yeah, are. He's uh, figure younger. So. I don't know Kazaa. Napster was so, before me. So the way they distribute, you know, music distribution is different. So like, um, you know, digital Spotify, it. Um, I, I'm not. I hate Spotify. You're. I, I'm openly, openly say that to you all the time. I fucking hate Spotify a lot. Um, I get the place, but I feel like it's it's essentially. I feel like it's almost stealing from the artist. You know, like to make music, you need to. You know, unless unless you're a Cardi B or a Post Malone. Uh, they're not they're not making anything on Spotify. Yeah. Like any <clears throat> artist. And yes, it gets their music out there and with internet distribution it's out there. But you should it should be there just like the radio to go, you know, kinda like uh, I Heart and Pandora and stuff, to hear a few songs and then go out and buy an album. Like that's Well, for me when it comes to Spotify, I and Apple Music and other streaming websites, I love it and I hate it. I love it for the the simplicity of it. You know, my friend can tell me Hey, have you ever heard this band, Greta Van Fleet? No, I haven't. Let me look that up real quick. Okay, here's their top five most played songs. Here's all their, here's their EP. Uh, when they release their album next month, you know, that'll be on there. It'll be real easy to go. And I can just say, okay, here's their top five most listened to songs. If they're going to catch my attention, they're probably going to catch you somewhere in these top five. Not necessarily. There's plenty of bands where I think their best song is in that top five. But it can at least catch someone's attention. Although I do agree with you in that I do I still kind of hold the old the old thought that you guys believe that you should listen to an album in its entirety from start to finish not yeah. focus you on should be buying cassette tapes not, not right? just the singles. you should be buying cassette tapes you should have mystery people from other states mail you <laughs> cassette tapes with their almost nude body on them that is the way it That's a story work. for another. You have, you have any input, real quick, about uh, uh, Spotify? Yeah, I think that um, I like Spotify. I do think that the artists are not compensated fairly, but I think that there is an extreme lack of original artists as well. So I don't know. It it might work out. I think maybe they. The artists have the power to maybe kind of... They have a lot of lawsuits against... Spotify has a lot of lawsuits right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just need to figure out a different way to monetize, I think. Because it's too hard to win against yeah. big business, I think. You just have to find a different and way to monetize. So, um, while we're on the topic of album and distribution and stuff, one thing that's interesting is CDs and vinyls, have even, even tapes, like cassette tapes, have uh, had a resurgence in the past five years. Vinyls have been having a resurgence for the past 10 years or so, um, but CDs kind of died there for a little bit, and now they're also back on a resurgence, mm -hmm. which is a good thing as a whole. Um, and also CDs, like, if, and MP3s are dead. Like, that's an interesting thing. Like, they're, yeah. everybody's like, that's the new form of music, and, like, iTunes is shutting down. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's not a relevant form well, of music anymore. Streaming, streaming, I feel like, was just the next level of that, yeah. and right now we can kind of get back to that retro feel of a, of a record. You know, the amount of... The amount of hipsters with turntables I know is just like off the charts and yeah. you know, vinyl just sounds better. We'll, we'll get into that. An interesting thing, we, we just talked about CDs and distribution, Alice in Chains' new album, um, I was looking at their sales for albums. So the first week, um, which this isn't this isn't good sales compared to like like I said, a Post Malone or Cardi B or somebody, but they had uh, 30, they had 29,000 um, in sales in a classic, in classic album release. So that's vinyls, cassettes, and a CDs, twenty nine thousand. They only had two thousand digital downloads total. Yeah. I mean, that's that's awesome to see that CDs are still, you know. But that thirty thousand in a week, that's not not good. 
for even for a band as big as Alice and Chains, yes, Lane Staley's dead again for another thing, but it it's it, that eight or nine years ago wouldn't have even been a thing. Like you would, CD sales have probably been in you know, a few thousand. Yeah, and vinyls would probably been you know four or five thousand. So I like the idea of vinyl because. I don't know of anybody that can copy a vinyl. So like you're not gonna it's it's pretty difficult to I mean you can obviously copy it to a digital format, but that defeats the purpose of having a vinyl mm-hmm. in the first place. You get so. something for your money, like Yeah, and And you're supporting the artist. Yeah, the artist doesn't have to worry like yeah, you can make a digital copy of a vinyl, but it's not the same. So there's more of a chance of the artist get, I don't know, I guess it's more support in my eyes for the artist getting their vinyl. Yeah. I'm not a vinyl guy at all, I'll just go ahead and say that. But also, um, I do know the way they, uh, when they're talking about record sales, um, for an artist, they base it off 10,000 streams equals one album sold, I believe. Like, yeah, it's re- it's really weird. They, I don't understand it, that. It all, it, all got, it all got brought up when um, they had the whole, maybe not for you guys, but the whole controversy over uh, the Travis Scott and Nicki Minaj uh, rap albums. Uh, who could outsell who? Uh, they said streaming played a big role in that. In that, if you listen to one single and that one single gets listened to ten thousand times, that counts as the whole album's been sold. Uh, so yeah, the way they the way twelve bucks. They're not one hundred percent. I don't think they've one hundred percent. And like the companies that do the it's rankings, like YouTube, kind of, I guess. Yeah. Billboard and the ratings, they haven't quite caught up to <clears throat> streaming and YouTube views. Because I know when they take into consideration, you know, what's the number one song in the country, they take into consideration YouTube views, album sales, streams, but I don't think they've quite got that figured out yet. I think it's still uh, kind it's of a really rough platform. numbers. YouTube it's is, real weird. YouTube's a whole other topic about YouTube music. That's yeah. a whole other situation. It's really complicated. What, There's so many media. What I would like to, to see is music videos making a resurgence resurgence and then using YouTube as a platform. Well, I mean, they are still quite popular on YouTube. Like, I don't know. I, I, well, at least for me, I personally, whenever I'm on YouTube, I'd say about 60% of the time, I'm watching something music related. The other part of the time I'm watching dudes polish axes and shit for some reason. So, <laughs> well, yeah, I don't, I watch, I watch a lot of weird stuff. I don't, <laughs> it's I, a rabbit hole, man. I find the YouTube weird parts of YouTube hole. very frequently. There was a guy telling me about how he'd never been to the moon. The other day, that at was at this weird. point, the suggested <laughs> the section of the YouTube the is Illuminati. already halfway into the rabbit holes. So like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's don't even get into conspiracy theory videos. I did that one day, and I'm like, wow, this guy's for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's 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 the. Uh, They're the entertaining, time. but you're like, what the fuck? Is I also like the guy that uh, only uses his like primitive living, where he builds everything out of mud and like goes into the forest with nothing, and then just like builds a house and builds like water mills that grinds up his grain and stuff. It's pretty cool. But yeah, music is the biggest part of yeah probably what I watch on YouTube. It's so like so where is rock and you know metal and whatever anything that's essentially not rap or hip hop or well, pop. Where are we at in that? I mean, there aren't. You look out there and right now, what metal, Metallica, uh, Foo Fighters, rock. Um, who else is popular right now? In the big part of rock goes. I mean. Uh, a lot of people, what I noticed, a lot of people in the, will consider Imagine Dragons rock. A lot of rock fans don't want to consider Imagine Dragons rock. <laughs> Throw it in my mouth. A little <laughs> <laughs> but again, you're at this point. We're still we're breaking down as to like, okay, so are they consi- are they still considered a rock band? Uh, do people want to do? They clearly get the listens, but do rock fans want to claim them as a rock band? If so, that's a very big success story for rock music. However, you obviously, know, I know a bunch of other people who don't want to claim, you know, bands like Imagine Dragons too, as a rock band. They're too, they're too pop. They're so, too out there. A lot of people don't want to claim bands like the 1975. A lot of rock people don't even want to claim bands like Portugal the Man because they're, people, they're too pop. And so at that point, we're really splitting some hairs, which I think leads nicely into my biggest issue with rock music and just with music way. in general. <laughs> It's the, you know, I'm reluctant to say the snobs, but it's the well, people. We're, we're, we are snobs. Like, like it's, we yeah. are, but I don't know. But I, like, I, I Again, like... I love it and I hate it because sometimes, because it's nice to have these different variations and dividing lines, but at the same time, I feel like at some point, as rock fans in general, we kind of screw each other over and we mess with each other because 
you know, that's not real rock or that's not the type of rock that I like. You know, I know we're pretty accepting dudes, but there's yeah, some people have... who it's like, if it's not the most oh, extreme know, technical yeah. death metal, then they don't count it. They don't, they Wait, here's, here's a good rock. example. So um, we re recently released on the channel, and everybody's probably familiar with, I released a Cannibal Corpse beer review. It was, it was a Cannibal Corpse beer review. And I mentioned in the video, oh, Megadeth is way better than the Cannibal Corpse. <laughs> but I, I like, you know, I like both bands. And it threw it. Oh, Megadeth sucks. I had 20 people, Megadeth sucks. And I'm like, really? Yeah, I, I mean, you see like the you dividing know, lines. Then that's fine. Like, yeah, if you don't like, yeah, that's fine. But yeah, I mean, you don't have to come out and say it sucks. Also, to be fair, Megadeth is one of the founding fathers of modern metal today. So all your little metal bands, Cannibal, no bias is here. Cannibal Corpse wouldn't exist without Megadeth. So that's... that's but yeah, I say we're doing that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not, but it's stuff like that. There's so much. That's, like there's yeah. so much infighting within the rock right. community. And while you don't I'm have sure, to like Megadeth, but you have to acknowledge that they're a founding father of music. Like, yeah, it's the same thing. I don't and, care if you want the band, like whatever. And while that exists in the pop and the rap, uh, you know, genres, I feel like it's way less. Uh, it's like just way less publicized. There's there may not be as many, you know, rap and hip hop snobs going. I mean, I, they definitely exist, but people who love Cardi B aren't gonna be like, but Post Malone is the worst thing ever. In which I've literally heard debates between Megadeth and Metallica fans oh, thinking right. that Metallica is the worst thing ever and Megadeth the best and vice versa. And I'm like, do you even know that they stemmed from literally the same group right. on the first album? Megadeth like, is what Metallica probably would have been. Like, yeah, had Dave Mustaine stayed there. <laughs> well, it's well just let's like, be real. Nobody sounds like Dave Mustaine vocally, so he sounds like he's uh, raping cats when he sings. So. <laughs> I mean, um, it's true. But that's but what makes up like Megadeth great. Like, I but, love it's the sound so, but it's so petty and it's yeah. so divisive. Oh and we just we tear each other up. It's fun and to it debate. It's us. fun to debate with music. It's fun right. to say, "Oh, Megadeth's better." You know, uh, you know, Megadeth's be better. Metallica's better. Debate about it, but you don't right. have to be like, "Fuck, suck, bro." It's like, no, you know, we could talk about the music, talk about the guitar playing, talk mm -hmm. about the bass work, talk about the drumming, lyrically. You know, to give legit reasons, not just they suck. Yeah, whenever you start crossing the territory of what's well, not okay that you have a different opinion, that's whenever it starts not being good now we're, mm. now we're getting into like political shit with, with that stuff but yeah it's, <laughs> it's like you know that i say this all the time there are only four bands that i truly hate so right. it's like and then that's and i don't i even i don't give you that much i don't give you any shit for most of the time for liking those bands i joke about it but i'm not being you know I mean, it's really it's really only, I'm being it's, it's really only one of the four <laughs> the other that's true the other the other three i'm not i don't you know what? green day oh man oh oh Stuck in my throat. Breaking my heart, so it's okay. <laughs> and I have no problem. And here's the thing: if, if Catfish here was like, "Man, I want to go to Green Day show, and I don't have anybody to go with," I would go with him. Like, and I would—I haven't seen Green Day live. Like on the record, I absolutely hate them, mm -hmm. but I'm willing to go see them live. They sound exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> I'm willing to. Go, I know I've heard rumors, but I'm willing to go see them live. And it's—it's, it's, and it's the same for most artists. You know, I would go give them. I, I'm going to give band a chance. Like, right. and I, like Primus is a perfect example for me because I fucking hated Primus when I first heard them, and now they're like literally my favorite band. So, yeah. All right. So I guess like um, for me, I think it's just a matter of rock music has kind of just become white noise. It just everybody was. It, it became so popular that it just became oversaturated. And everybody was making it, and so I think it kind of, I mean, if I listen to a certain type of music, I kind of have to reset my ears and listen to something else for a while. I have, like, just my own personal tastes are kind of susceptible, so I imagine music as a whole was pretty susceptible, but that's just me personally. So, uh, I think part of the issue, so let's, let's kind of stem to when we started like seeing a heavy decline into rock and metal in general and we, we mentioned this earlier when we were talking off camera but it's more of like a, you know 2007 8 era yeah. it's right at the uh, end of the emo phase uh, you know and we're going into like po there's a really fall a small uh, space where there's like post hardcore uh, and after that it kind of just it goes into those Munford, Munford and Sons and stuff like that, um, and then for in Louisville we just straight they killed all our radio stations at, like in that time like all of our rock stations 
our modern rock station just got absolutely killed. Like just, we had three, uh, went down to two, and then one. Now we don't even have one. So we have some like we have some general rock stations mm -hmm. that'll play uh, anything from the '70s all the way to like like the early 2000s, but they're not gonna play anything modern. One of them. One of them. I have heard they play. I have heard them play Greta Van Fleet a few times, and that's, they sound and good. that's like the most modern thing. Seven. And that's like the most modern thing I've heard like post 2008, 2009. And it there, might be so. also that I don't know. I mean, streaming might have killed those stations because I know me personally, I haven't listened to the radio. I can't remember last time. I, uh, I stopped listening to radio for that reason, uh, but I was like, I'm a little bit older than you guys. So like when I was in high school, like going to radio, the radio festivals were a big deal. So there's like LRS Fest, which mm -hmm. was what I went to every year. It was kind of like what Lighter Than Life is now. Um, and they, they did, they'd have one stage with about 20 or 30 local bands and then they'd have the headline bands which would be like 15 or 20 big popular bands I, I remember the last one it was like puddle of mud three days grace puddle of mud right <laughs> um just bands like that i would go and i wouldn't necessarily be in a lot of those bands but uh it would, i just went to hang out and mm -hmm. listen to good music you listen to music it doesn't like i said i don't have to like the band but like we don't have those radio stations to like really sponsor those ladder than life I honestly can't see that last in more than two or three more years. Yeah. I mean, we do have our Waterfront Wednesdays during the summertime that's put on. Uh, do we get some hot jazz? Some like jazz? FBK. No, it's mostly indie rock. It's mostly like indie rock and stuff like that. Some, sometimes some folky stuff. Iron and Wine's been there before, which is pretty big. Uh, Carsey Headrest is coming up soon. Uh, you know, that's... Jay Roddy was there. No Iron yeah. Butterfly, though, right? I don't know what that means. No, you know so who Iron Butterfly is? Nope. They got a DeVito. Make fun of him in the description. I'm <laughs> joking. Now. Joking. We don't, we don't want that. <laughs> but, you know, those are, they're, they're more indie bands. They're not these vastly well-known bands, but they do have a drawing among kind of the, they have an interesting demographic at those events where you have people as young as high school and you have people who are older now maybe they're just going because hey it's free music and it's somewhere out there but i know because i've known some of these bands prior to going in and already really enjoying them um Mur uh, murder by death was there last year and that's them you know it's not nearly as hardcore as it sounds no i, I, <laughs> I, 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 I said like, yeah. man yeah. it's not like something I've been I, really I, I like murder by death it's like no but johnny cash kind of vibes but again like it's you know, Over the Rhine was earlier this past summer. They're more of a country folk band. And it's this, you know, it's just what people want to listen to and it's what people will show up to go see, you know, aside from, uh, aside from you know, <laughs> we're going to be doing this for a while. Fuck it. <laughs> Hip hop and trap and whatnot. But I, see, and I see a pretty big resurgence in, you know, I still see a pretty healthy indie rock and kind of like a folk rocky country sound that is relatively popular among, you know, you could say the hipster community or, you know, like the 20 something year olds who love IPAs. But like, whether you want to consider that rock music, that's relevant. That's some like people, IPAs. It really yeah. is, though. It's some people would consider that rock music. Some people would not consider that rock music. And so, kind of where do you want to go from there? And is that like the new face of you know rock and roll? Is this more kind of toned down, more relaxed, kind of a more indie rock sound? Some of it even even to me is more reminiscent of like '60s beach rock, where it's nice and laid back and chill, and it's not. Cranked up the overdrive and all that, even rock though that's still, <laughs> like, that might, that stuff might still exist. But I feel like the you know these young these young rockers, if you want to call them, they've you know they've toned it down a little bit. They've they have kind of you know if you're saying that music is cyclical, you know they're kind of you know maybe they're resetting back to the earlier earlier days of rock, the 50s and 60s, and you know maybe we can see it start to get heavier again in the next. 10, 20 years, just like it did. I'd say having an open mind is a big part of, uh, and that's all music, and we talked a little bit about this earlier, but um, having an open mind, like for instance, what the people I hang out with and the music I listen to, most of the people for the most part listen to the same music for me, or they listen to at least some of the bands. When I introduced to these two, like they were completely, for the most part, completely different than what I was normally accustomed to listen to. And I discovered a lot of new bands, you know, ones that I may not like, but some that I do like. Uh, and it's just a whole new genre, and it, I think it's partially due to my age and you know, our age gap and what we listen to. But um, if I wouldn't, if I would have been like I was five or six years ago, where I was like 
nope, this is the only music that I like. I don't like anything else. I hate everybody else's music. If I was still like that, then I would be listening to the same 10 bands over and over again for the rest of my life. And I think that's also an issue with a lot of people, especially dads. Yeah. So, I'm not a dad, but I do have a very, a pretty strict rotation of music. Like, if I don't know what to listen to, I go back to the same. Right, well, that's, right. yeah, but you're open to listen to new things. Yeah. So, like, you know. Like, we all have, like, what makes us comfortable for whatever reason. It makes us comfortable for whatever reason we enjoy it. But that open-mindedness is something I feel like a lot of people, a lot of people do lack. Uh, yeah. A lot of people that I know from, like, my parents' generation my, or my grandparents' generation, uh, you know, generally yeah. seem... Some of them are more open-minded. Yeah, like my grandma uh, just listens to Christmas music 24 percent <laughs> Yeah, other I'm, people are. I'm not even joking. That's the most grandma thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> and all year round, she listens to Christmas music. I like, support that, but she's really happy. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I think I'm exaggerating, but it's the same with Christmas movies. Just Christmas movies all year round. Like, but did she watch National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation? No, it's too much for her. Oh, man. Damn. It's got to be Miracle on whatever street and... That's fair. Whatever else, very Christmassy, like, 60s movies. The angel gets his but wings. I don't even know if it's, like, solely, like, a generational thing. Because I know people even from my generation who are, like, you know, if it's not trap rap, I don't listen to it. Here's oh, and so that yeah. closed-mindedness isn't, I don't think yeah. it's like you can label on, like, one generation or another. It's all, well, you, it's all right. generations it's, put it's, together, but, it's different. but, it, but it becomes a big clash when, because a lot of these complaints, a lot of the struggle are coming from these older generations, and while if they're not open-minded and they're clashing with younger generations who are also not open-minded, then we're never going to meet in the middle. Um, part, of, part of my job, sorry, I was checking the time because our camera only records 10-minute intervals. It's very annoying. <laughs> Um, so like what I do for my job is I train a lot of new employees and I'm not going to say what I do per se about my job, but I train new employees. So you do too. So we're getting, um, kids in here that are 18, most of them are 18, 19 coming in. So when we have conversations about music, I'm just like, what are you even talking about? <laughs> like, and then I mentioned stuff that I'm into. They're like, what? Like, oh, you know, my dad listens to that. I'm like, I'm not that old, bro. Like, <laughs> let's be real here. Right. But, like, some of them are more open. They're like, no, that's crap. Or, you know, they're not going to give it a chance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, you know, just, I don't know. Like I said, I was like that. And it's, it, it, people need to be more open-minded with more music. I wish I was that way with, like, more open-minded with, like, rap. I just can't get behind any of it. I've tried many, many times. Uh, it doesn't appeal to me. That's um, fair. And I don't have any problems with anybody that likes rap or trap or whatever hip hop is out there. I just I can't get into it. But I'm I'm I always I always give it a try. I think for me, like what I look for in music is just people doing interesting things, and maybe not everything they do is is done well. But on the, like the hip hop front, and I don't know if you guys listen to them or. or follow him or whatever but more than likely not <laughs> more than likely not but Tyler the creator I think he does a lot of interesting stuff mm -hmm. and it's stuff I can get behind not everything that he does it's it's pretty weird and I mean especially strange. and especially in his younger in his like younger days as an artist it's very much a, a shock factor yeah He's very much a shock rapper but as he progresses he's still doing a lot of things Trapper. that are interesting <laughs> no they're still weird but they're interesting in the choices that he makes, especially like the music videos and stuff. Mm -hmm. He does a lot of cool stuff with that that I wish would translate over into modern rock music. Like I wish they would take certain aspects of that, of doing, trying some interesting, weird stuff, mm -hmm. maybe not kind of like topic wise, uh, but just like as far as musically and then like the video production kind of stuff, pulling that over. And, I think that. I think uh, Tame Impala has a lot of really interesting music videos. Yeah. Uh, that group or that guy. <laughs> have, you, have you ever listened to Tame Impala? You might you might if like they're, it. If it's, they're if they're a hip hop or rap. No no it, no it's, they're it's an indie artist. I know who Ice they're, Cube is. And they're Ice like Peach. an Australian psychedelic indie act. It's weird because it's, like it's really it's really just one yeah. dude. But they're kind of a band. But it's kind of just one dude. It. You really, have to, you 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 probably like them. They're very interesting, and I like they're doing. Weird, I like weird music. They're doing a lot of interesting stuff. I feel. I think that's true of a lot. I've been really it's getting. It's kind of hit or miss for me with Tampala. I think. 
I don't know. I've been getting a lot into uh, the Australian rock movement. They've been doing a lot of cool psychedelic stuff. They have a lot of metal, good metal bands. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's there an Australian band that I was listening to today that you probably never heard of that I'll introduce to you guys afterwards. The Vines. Have you ever heard of The Vines? It doesn't sound You say The Vines? The Vines. The Vines. No, I don't think I yeah. it, was, it was like a high school band for me, but it was, they were very, not very known. Um, they were like a really young band at the time, like Red Event, mm -hmm. sort of, but they're more Nirvana y, I guess, except more Yelly. So. Okay. Um, so here's another issue I have with, uh, I don't know, rock music is um, the reason I kind of got out of it in, you know, the, that short period in like 2009-ish when, you know, I thought the, you know, post-hardcore and all that, when it was going into like, again, like Imagine Dragons and Black Keys and stuff like that, uh, less on the Black Keys because they're not as bad about it, but like very digital and artificial sounding music. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like the new. I don't like the modern recording process. I get the point behind it. Well, you know, you you play isolate. You play your part. Next person comes in. They play their part. Next person comes in. They play their part. And then they go about their business. Right. Like that's, it's very personable. And you know, mm. I feel like it's it just kind of put together and they're there to make you know music. And a lot of the bands I like don't do that. They still record, right. you know, classic style. And I don't have like I don't necessarily have a problem recording like that. I have a problem with a lot of electronic sounds in my music and I think that's why I kind of steer away from hip hop in general mm -hmm. uh, and I think there's a place for it in rock but it was becoming the the main thing there for a while it was right. a very electronic and I don't know about you guys how you feel about it but we were listening to that band Nothing More and I was just instantly turned off by the first minute of that song yeah I think there is tasteful use of electronica yeah. mm -hmm. and then there's just overwhelming where it's like I don't like why are robots making music I don't want to listen to this I mean for me when it comes to like the digital making of music digital music you know auto-tuning fixing stuff uh, I think that's it, another subject I think that using those tools it's a tool like any other instrument or voice you know you can use that tool well and there's people who make really interesting sounding music using those tools. I mean, I found a YouTube video the other day of a guy, he just took like sounds that a weird radiator was making, spliced them all together, and made like a really interesting sounding beat. And that takes hard work, that takes that's, effort that's to cool, do. That's cool, but like I don't, I don't want but, that in my rock music. But what, I'm, but what I'm saying is a lot of times when know, some of these beats, cool. some of these people who make beats do it relatively, you know, lazily. And they don't make it's their nuts. Beats. You know, it's not. You know, it's not fun. It's not interesting. Like, let's let's be real. They're not making their beats. Most of the modern artists. Well, let me rephrase it. Most of the modern popular artists aren't making their beats. Not saying well, that the produ Well, okay. So like the producers, the sound engineers, the people who are making those beats, if they're not really utilizing those tools the same way a musician would utilize yeah. their drums, their bass, their guitar. Wow. So you're not gonna get. So like, we don't see as many crazy stories of you know. Louie Louie by the Kingsman being done with one microphone in someone's garage with one take, or, or Led Zeppelin playing in a stairwell, or My Morning Jacket recording in a grain silo, or Primus's first demo recorder on the VHS tape. Yeah, like or Green Day using the dildo on their guitar. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like like you may not hear as many stories like that. Have the fun. <laughs> like I feel like the history behind the music is also there's gone. a huge there's, like, difference in a musician and a performing artist and I feel like most of popular music are performing artists they're not Great. musicians well we haven't even dived into the, like the country the country <laughs> section of modern country so like uh, you know. want to get into bands uh, we didn't mention this earlier another reason I have a I have an issues with popular music is they don't literally write none they literally write they, it's cool if they're just gonna sing that's cool well write your own music like at least write your own music but you don't you're just a face yeah and you're, you're not a very good one at that so it's like country is like notoriously bad about not writing their own music um and you know with the exception of you know old school country majority of modern country artists and we can see Taylor Swift she's not even country anymore probably but they don't write their own music and it's generic and they have the same three chord freaking music that's on every one of their songs so yeah do I like modern country not per se I can get behind some of the 90s stuff but even the 90s stuff was under the same thing they didn't write a lot of their music either yeah, I mean it's a very it's a I know there's been uh, some funny things where uh, Chris Stapleton will quote unquote cover a song and people are like oh did you guys hear uh, Chris Stapleton covered 
this Luke Bryant song or this song Which uh, he probably wrote. and it's like well you know he's been writing music in Nashville for over 10 years before he even got his own like album so no he wrote all those songs <laughs> you know that's his song <laughs> so if you're wondering why it sounds different or sounds better even like yeah it's because that's that's his creation I think that, that is, you can tell when musicians make their own music because they're making something as opposed to performing something that somebody else made that's mm -hmm. just that's just the way it um, hey, So let's talk about like a little bit more about concert venues and stuff like that. So like um, a lot of bands, and this is just normal rock shows that I go to, uh, bands have taken to doing a lot of covers. Like it wasn't, when I would go to concerts, I, I've been to hundreds. So when I would go to concerts in the early 2000s, um, you know, there would rarely be a cover song. Rarely any bands would play a cover. Now I go to a show, uh, they're playing at least three or four covers from other artists. So, uh, with the exception of Slayer, did not play any covers, but um, mm -hmm. all the other bands that opened for Slayer, absolutely they were playing. Every one of them played at least one or two covers. Right. And I, I don't have a problem with covers, but I hate artists that get famous off of covers or sample other artists' music, which happens a lot in the hip hop uh, world. And yes, it's well, you're bringing. You, you could argue that they're bringing the song back, mm -hmm. um, but they're they're stealing it. Like it's what it boils down to. And like doing a cover for respect, as because you have respect for the artist and getting famous off that uh, thing. Here's a good gray area for this Weezer's uh, cover right now. Oh so, yeah, because that's that's really popular now. The Weezer cover. They were very respect. Yeah, they were very respectful about that, and they had full backing of Africa or sorry yeah, Toto, Toto, and then Toto covered a Weezer song, Hash Pipe, out of all for some reason, which is kind of funny. Of all, of all the bizarre songs. <laughs> <laughs> All the choices. But the, the point is, like, uh, they're in a gray area about the covering because they made it popular again. It was already a, it was a meme at that point. And yeah. Yeah. Weezer's one of those. Didn't we look up bands. Uh, facts on that song? And, like, that dude that was in that song just had a bunch of other stuff. We were like, what? But he also made most of his money. They're a studio musician. Yeah, they were all studio musicians. So. So the individual accolades of the members of Toto, because they're studio musicians, they're they, they're just a part of hundreds of thousands of successful songs. They've got like hundreds of Grammy nominations and wins. It's it's insane. But that's because they were all just studio guys, and then they got together and were like, "Hey, let's be a band. Let's name ourselves after that dog from Wizard of Oz and have two songs." Do they do they have two songs? Do they even have two? Um, uh, Hold the line. <laughs> oh yeah. And Africa, two songs that sound nothing alike. Weezer did Same a lot of, when I saw them live, they did, they did a lot of covers. Really? Like, I would say, like, well, I guess the Smashing Pumpkins, they did, like, five. But they also did a three-and-a-half-hour show, yeah, so. They, they did a lot and they did Stairway and Space Oddity, so, you know. Yeah, so, I mean, basically, I think that Rock will be back eventually. It's, it's my take on it. I just think it's... Well, I'll be dead. Yeah, <laughs> well, we won't be here for it, but it'll come back. Uh... But it, it'll be long after we're gone. The, the, who knows if they're really So bottom line, I think people need to keep an open mind. Mm -hmm. They need to listen to new things. Um, give things a chance. Don't you know? Don't be an asshole about right. other people's stuff. Um, That's a big one. And you know, rock's never going to die completely. But you know, it's not, it's definitely not popular. It's not even a little bit popular at this point. Um, and, you know, the indie scene is very interesting right now, but there's always been an indie scene. Just like, you know, in the 80s and, not, you know, there's mm -hmm. punk. In the 90s, uh, it's debatable in the late 80s, early 90s, you're between thrash and grunge, but grunge is far more popular than thrash was at the time. Right. So, like, thrash and punk was kind of that genre. Um, but with the modern, with the modern age... I thought I was going to kill you. I thought it was going to fly down my throat. <laughs> with the modern age of music, it's going to be different and I think I think we're just going to keep it in digital and I think actual musicianship is going to die and that's that's my biggest worry um, for music in the future like with rap and hip hop with the exception of a, a, a computer made beat I mean and that's not even you know an instrument what mm -hmm. what kind of how often do you see guitar work you know we're, you know we're not talking about Lil Wayne <laughs> he, he's the best guitarist ever so a fact proven yeah so, but think about that. So, look at your top of your chart and how many of those people can actually play instruments. Right. I mean, Post Malone can kind of play guitar, um, but, you know, is he a really good guitarist? That's debatable. 
So. Machine Gun Kelly's a pretty decent guitarist, believe it or not. The rapper. Is he a rapper? Yeah. I He's feel like I hear about him playing at some bar around here all the time or something. <laughs> no, no. No, I think he's a popular mumble yeah. rapper that like is, even is, in one Is that a thing? Yeah, he's the yeah. guy mumble that, rapper. Yes. Yeah, he's the guy that he was the guy opening up for Fall Out Boy that <laughs> made the diss track against Eminem. <laughs> you know, it's not important. But okay, I, I, now I, I know that you like Fall Out Boy, and I respect the fact that you like Fall Out Boy. But I listen to their, some of the new stuff, and it is horrendously bad. No, uh, well, I think that's another interesting is where we're seeing rock bands and where they're, they're trying going to for go. Now, where, yeah, you know your bands like your like Fall Out Boy's latest album, Paramore's latest album. They're they're way different than what they initially started. I'm out gonna go a little shit for this one, but uh, me, Prairie Dog and I are big fans of Bullet for My Valentine, and it's, it's this high school thing for me. So they're a little on the emo side. Um, they had a couple. Scream Aim Fire and uh, I think it was like Poison or something. They had a couple yeah. really good albums. The Poison was their second one, I think. They yeah, they, they had some good albums. Uh, but then all of a sudden they try to go mainstream and all of a sudden they're doing softer vocals. They have a lot of more electronic in their music. Mm-hmm. I get that they're trying to get more modern um, and they're trying to appeal to a wider audience. But at the same time, they're alienating their fans. Right. So it's like, and that's. A lot of rock bands are doing that, and you look at all the big bands out there, at some point, at some point they try to change their sound. Metallica, right. Slayer, Megadeth, Anthrax actually really hasn't ever tried to change their sound, but um, so, so, um, you know, Megadeth had an album that nobody talks about, it's called Risk. They try to be like a full-on pop band, and it's so bad. <laughs> I wonder if that... I, w- I wonder what the data is if that correlates with changes in record labels, if any of those do. I don't, I don't know if it would or not, I've never really looked into it. But I agree, Wolf for My Valentine after Screaming Fire is trash. Right. Uh, and Trey, you kind of went the same route, I think. Thank you, you're the only, I, I talk about this all the time with Prairie Dog, and he doesn't, what are you talking about Trey? I'm like, they did the same thing. They, the, all those bands did the same thing. What was another one? Uh, was it All That Remains or Still Remains? I don't know, I get those two mixed up. Uh, I know All That Remains, it, so it's probably what it is, but yeah, they, they kind of went the same route. So yeah, a lot of those bands went that route, and that, that was, they all, they all died. I mean, so. Prairie, Prairie Dog and I have discussed uh, our former love and now kind of tainted love for Panic at the Disco. I was going to say The Cure. <laughs> he loves The Cure. Yeah, the Cure's good. Remember that one time but, I watched those Cure videos and we were like, nope, turn this off. <laughs> <laughs> what a time. <laughs> but, no, um, you know, I don't know, we discussed, you know, uh, the career path of Maroon 5 and how Maroon 5 has kind of went from, in their early times, as being like an actual band to being almost like the, you know... Fun fact, I'm actually going to see them next weekend. Interesting. <laughs> So, Interesting. Another thing I have, I have to say is we, we talked a little bit about live shows, but you go to concerts. Like it's important to go to concerts. If you want to support uh, rock bands, it, it doesn't matter what artist you go to. Go to concerts. Buy buy overpriced merch. So uh, reasonably overpriced merch, not not fifty dollar t shirts. Like to buy anth- I bought this Anthrax shirt right here uh, for twenty dollars, and I paid. This, I bought this signed album right here, like, for $20. Like, the album's $12, and it's, it's a special edition. So, like, I'm supporting the artist. I, don't, I got that separate. That was $3. It was, it was used at the show I went to, so. Um, but, yeah, I mean, support the artist. Yeah, support the artist, although uh, a lot of record labels now have contracts about uh, merch now too which well, is another reason why merch may be going up and up because now record labels are trying to get a little cut of the merch yeah. deal so, but yeah go to shows don't because, trust record labels um, when I went to see Slayer I mentioned this earlier when I went to see Slayer Slayer Anthrax Napalm Death Lamb of God and uh, Testament that's, that's a lot of bands tickets $40 that's cheap for that many metal bands mm. they're playing the Nashville Municipal Auditorium it held maybe two or three thousand people wasn't fully sold out, mostly sold out. For that many bands, it was pathetic. Like, to see a show like that. And, you know, granted, I'm used to going to shows like, you know, Mercury Ballroom, but like, even the Foo Fighters, the Foo Fighters are one of the biggest rock bands ever. They could, they couldn't, they could barely, they couldn't even sell out the um, uh, Rupp Arena. Right. And, you know, that's not, that's not, very big. That's not good. Yeah. Like, that's, you know, but I guarantee if, if, Taylor Swift or uh, who just came here? Taylor Pink. Swift had to get the stadium because it was the only thing big enough to yeah, hold. Yeah, Taylor Swift right. almost sold out all of Cardinal Stadium. 
And I mean, Metallica sold out uh, the Young Center. Like, that yeah, it was. Too. It's Metallica. But see, They're, they might be one of the few. Well, Metallica played. The last time Metallica yeah. came here, they got uh, they were playing the uh, Freedom Hall, and they didn't sell at Freedom Hall, and that was in two thousand three. Yeah. Um, and even if they did sell at the Young Center, it's still not as big as the stadium. So no, still no. not selling out. No, you're you're not out selling Taylor Swift. All right, we're gonna go ahead and end it here. It's getting long, and plus we lost some footage already, like twice, that's my fault. or like three times. So we're gonna go ahead and end it. Uh, that's been our episode. If you like these uh, long rant style videos that are obscenely long, you can leave a comment down below. If you made it to the end, kudos. Yeah. Don't forget to check us out on Heavy Metal Bake Sale. Um, if you'd like to discover some new music, we do our pick of the weeks. So it's a perfect place to go check out. I'm Special K. I'm Catfish. Now I'm Seabass. Thanks for watching. You motorboat and son of a bitch. <laughs>